And this is part 13 of my series on Python for stock analysis. And you can find links for the other videos and the code on GitHub in the description. So where we left off in part 12, I had developed a few plots that we might be interested in. And then in this video, I'm going to add a couple of methods uh, where we can look at sort of different slices of the data. So I'm going to start off by writing a method that just looks at days where options expire. All right, so I'm talking about the monthly options. All right, so that'll be the third Friday in every month. Okay, so we'll just call that option expiration. All right, and this is pretty straightforward. All we really need is a mask, right, that, that just sort of hides all the data we're not interested in. So to do this, I'm going to write npware. All right, and I'm going to add three conditions. All right, so we're going to be looking at the index of the data. All right, and then really the first day it can be an expiration Friday would be the 15th. That's the earliest it could be. If it was a Friday and the 15th, it must be the third Friday. All right, so we're going to look for days that are bigger than the 14th. All right, and try to line this up so it's readable. All right, the last day it can be is the 21st. All right, and then I'm going to limit that to Fridays. All right, and that's a day of week. So thank you, pandas. All right, and Friday is four. All right, and so when all that is true, we'll write true, and then otherwise we'll write false. Okay, and then yeah, all we have to do is return the data with this mask applied. Okay, so uh, let's try that. All right, so there we have it. Let's just take a closer look at this real quick. All right, so you can just see that, all right, instead of having all the data, right, we just have uh, those expiration Fridays. All right, and we can always see that, yeah, they're somewhere between the 15th and the 21st. All right, so the next uh, method I'm going to write, and, and this is actually going to be the last method that I write here, and, uh, you know, I'll leave it up to you to sort of expand on this and, and make your class more comprehensive. But what I'm going to do is look for days uh, since the last two standard deviation move. All right, so maybe look to see uh, is a move due. All right, so we'll just call this how long uh, the low volatility has lasted. Okay, and I think I have to set a, a setting in pandas to do this. All right, so I'm not going to be strictly using vectorized operations here, so we may not need this, but I'm going to put it in there anyway. It shouldn't hurt anything. All right, and basically what I'm going to be doing is adding a column to the data here. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, and it's going to be days less than two standard deviation, and I'm going to set it to zero. All right, and so uh, initially I'm just going to sort of fill in zeros, and then I'm going to go down through and every day we haven't had a two standard deviation move, I'm going to increment this. All right, so it'll start at zero, one, two, three. And then once it gets a two standard deviation move, it's going to start over one, two, three. Okay. All right, so I'll kind of keep track of the count here. All right, and then uh, I'm going to look, sort of loop over the data. All right, and we're going to look at that magnitude column. So if that, uh, let's see, self.data, the magnitude, all right, at the index location of the row, all right, if that's less than zero, or sorry, less than two, all right, we're going to increment our count, and we're going to place the count in that row at the days less than two standard deviation column. Okay, and then otherwise, right, it must have been at least a two standard deviation move, right? So we're going to reset the count, and uh, I'm also going to sort of put this in as well. All right, so no matter what, I'm going to put in this count, right? And then uh, sometimes I'm going to reset it to zero. All right, so basically, right, as soon as we get a two standard deviation move, uh, we're going to see the count there. All right, and then I'm going to return this data frame uh, that has uh, just the, the two standard deviation moves. Okay, and then we're going to be able to see how many days in between the last uh, two standard deviation or greater move. All right, so I'll just call this low vol. All right, and it's going to be the self.data. And then I guess I'll 
guess there's a rare chance that it might be equal to it, so we'll put that one in there too. And then we'll just return this. Okay, let's see how that works. Let me get rid of some of these lines. Okay, and then we'll test that low vol duration. All right, so let's see. I spelled that wrong. So that's probably not going to work. All right, let's try one more time. All right, so there we have it. All right, and so we can see that, all right, uh, you know, about a year ago here as of this video, right, we had gone two days, right, since the previous uh, two standard deviation move and six, 32, 41, and, and so forth. All right, so that's going to do it for part 13. And actually, that's going to wrap up section two. I'm going to leave it up to you to further develop this class. All right. And then I'm going to come back with a part 14. So we'll call it section three. And I'm going to show you how to package all of our functions into a Python package that you can install using pip. All right. So I hope to see you there.